Good afternoon. Uh, we are going to do the notes for 5.5 inequalities for two triangles. Okay, so the first theorem that we're going to learn is called the hinge theorem. And it's a pretty easy concept uh, if I can use my poor illustrations and show you. So basically, if you have two sides of a triangle and a vertex, if the hinge is open, you're going to have a long distance between the sides. If the hinge is closed or almost closed, you're going to have a very short length there. That's hinge theorem. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. So let's do this. Theorem 5, oops, 512 says if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, but the included angle of the first triangle is larger than the included angle of the second side, then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of a second triangle. Okay, let's illustrate this a bit. Okay, so you're given triangle ABC here, and between the two triangles, you are told that AB, let's hit, put one tick mark, AB is congruent to DE. They are the same length. BC, let's use two tick marks, is congruent to EF. Put two tick marks there. And here's the however. However, angle B, this angle, is, should be, should be angle B is, let's scribble that out, less than the measure of angle E. This one's definitely the larger of the two. If that's the case, then the smaller angle is going to be opposite the smaller side. And the larger angle is going to be opposite the longer side. And again, we're comparing two triangles in this. So in this case, if angle B is less than the measure of angle E, then we can say that side AC is going to be less than side DF. We don't necessarily know exactly how much smaller. We just know that relative to each other, AC has to be smaller. All right, that's your basic hinge theorem. Now we're going to do the converse. And remember, the converse is basically the reverse. So it says if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, but the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second. Now, the original hinge theorem went from angles being longer to sides. This one's going to go from sides being longer to angles. So if the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second, and here we go, then the included angle of the first triangle is larger than the included angle of the second triangle. All right, we're going to kind of diagram these triangles again. Okay, so if BA, put one tick mark, is congruent to ED, one tick mark, BC, two tick marks, is congruent to EF. So they start the same. However, this is the part that's the different between the two is the however part. The other, however, was the angles being different. This, however, is the side lengths being different. So AC, side length AC, is smaller than DF. So AC is smaller, 
df is larger. Using this theorem, we can then extrapolate about the angles. The smaller side is going to be opposite the smaller angle. The larger side is going to be opposite the larger angle. So we can say that the measure of angle B should be less than the measure of angle E because B is opposite a smaller side. All right, that is hinge theorem and the converse. Let's flip the page and we're going to go to some practice questions. Okay, 5.5, given. D is the midpoint. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. There we go. D is the midpoint of AC. Okay, so let's mark... A, D, and C, D have to be the same because D is the midpoint. And the measure of angle 1 is less than the measure of angle 2. Okay, so we're going to do a single circle around 1 and a double circle around 2 because 2 is bigger. What can you deduce? Okay. So first thing we can, we, right now with the information we have, we can't deduce a whole lot. Here's the thing though. If we look at these triangles as separate, the top one and the bottom one, they do share a side, BD, that one they have in common. So we can say that BD is congruent to BD by reflexive property. Using what they told us about the midpoint, uh, uh, but D being the midpoint, we can also say that AD is congruent to CD. And that would be the definition of a midpoint, which splits a segment into two equal pieces. So what we're laying down are the first two conditions for the hinge theorem. This, these two together, are the if. If two pairs of sides are the same. And then you've got the however part. The however part is what is different. And the however part is that the measure of angle one is less than the measure of angle two. That was given to us. So if these two things are true, however, the angles are different, then here's our conclusion. So therefore, we can say that the side opposite angle 1 is going to be smaller than the side opposite angle 2. So we can say that side BC, its measure, so no bar, has to be less than a, B, and the reason would be the hinge theorem. So the hypothesis or the if are that the two pairs of sides match up. There is a however one thing is true, and then the third is hinge theorem, the conclusion. Okay, we're going to write a proof. We're going to write a two-column proof. Here's the drawing. It says given... BC congruent to DC. Let's mark that. One tick mark, two tick marks. And side AB is bigger than side AD. Okay, so AB is bigger than AD. So we'll put one line on AD, two on AB to show which one is bigger. Notice the drawing doesn't necessarily show that. Unless it says drawing is to scale, you have to mark your drawing so that you can read it given the information you're provided. And we're trying to prove that angle one is greater than angle two. Okay, so they're setting us up to use hinge theorem or actually the converse of the hinge theorem because remember that the converse of the hinge theorem goes from sides first and then to angles. So that's the one we're going to have to do. But first we have to do the if 
of the converse of the sorry of the hinge theorem and the converse which is that the two sides are congruent so the first given they've told us is that bc is congruent to dc and that's the first one they gave us given the second one is a b greater than a d that was given okay ac congruent to ac the side that they share is congruent to itself that is reflexive property and if you want to get very specific it's the reflexive property of congruence okay so now that we know that two sides are the same now we can say that angle one is greater than angle two because angle one is opposite the bigger side angle two is opposite the smaller side and that is the converse hinge theorem converse hinge theorem and that's the proof pretty simple okay questions three and four complete with less than equal to or greater than and we're supposed to compare angle one and angle two so first thing we notice is that both of them have a side of length four they also share a side so that one's the same so the if the hypothesis of the hinge theorem is now proved we have two pairs of identical sides now we get to look this side is 4 which is bigger than 3 that means that the angle opposite the 4 which is 1 is going to be greater than the angle opposite the 3 which is 2 all right let's do number 4 we're interested in SRT which is this angle right there and U rv oh we got overlapping angles okay so this angle is one of the ones that we want and then this angle is the other one that we want sometimes it helps to draw them overlapping okay so looking at these two triangles i already have one side congruent and two sides congruent the, the two and the two so I've got that so now we're looking at the two angles SRT which is the blue one and URV which is the red one so the side of 10 is opposite the red one the side of 8 is opposite the blue one so that means that S R T, which is the blue one, is going to be less than U R V because eight is less than ten. Okay, we're going to add a problem onto this because there's one on your homework that I think you might need a little bit of extra help with. So this is problem number five. We're going to squeeze it in here. So first thing I want you to do is draw. Just draw two simple triangles that look you can draw them so they look identical that's fine we're going to mainly use them to label okay the first triangle is a b c the second triangle is d e f and angle a is 45 degrees angle b is 35 degrees the side opposite angle a is 2x plus 12 the side opposite angle d is x plus 50 and we're going to mark ac congruent to df and ab congruent to de so that meets the the uh, hypothesis of the hinge theorem which is that you have to have two sides that match okay so what we're trying to do is find the limitations of x find the limitations of x all right so we know from our theorem that since a is bigger than d bc has to be greater than 
EF, the side opposite the largest angle, is bigger than the side opposite the smaller angle. So if we fill in what BC and EF are equal to, that gives us 2X plus 12 greater than X plus 50. This is a solvable equation. We're going to solve it by subtracting X to the left, subtracting 12 to the right. So X is greater than 38 degrees. So X has to be greater than 38 degrees for this to be true. We don't know of any of the other limitations, but we know that much. It's got to be greater than 38 degrees. So I wanted to show you a find the limitations of X question because one is going to come up on your homework. All right, that is everything for today. Have a wonderful afternoon.